Okay, so welcome back to the goals. And so far, we have studied two different mechanisms, two different means, a technology through a set of algorithms that enable me show a go-to-goal behavior. So, we looked at the potential field, attraction towards the goal, repulsion from the obstacles, the velocity obstacle, where you say these velocities are collision prone, but I also need to go towards the goal. So let's select a velocity accordingly. Geometrical analysis, there is where it's the goal. This is where there are obstacles and hence this is where my immediate motion should be. Vector field histogram, this is the obstacle density function around me. Let's Avoid the obstacles, also concentrate on the goal, that's how it should go. So, reactively, in a reactive sense, we enabled go to goal using a variety of scenarios, which is absolutely amazing for us. However, it turns out that if you are programming agents to display behaviors, of course, there are multiple of them. So, if there are multiple of them, let's just concentrate on one of them and see what really is it going. Do you know anyone in your university who just attains go to goal and once the goal is achieved, rests at the goal till infinity? That doesn't happen. Even I am moving around. So if you are modeling my behavior, imagine me going from the lab to my office to eventually at the home going to meet the director, the head of the department multiple times as per scheduled meetings, as per calls. So it's a complicated life. You students come from hostel, attend class one, class two, go to cafeteria, attend another class, go back to hostel, come back for the labs go to the market so it's a lot more complicated things that you are doing and the best part of it is that you don't even know your complete schedule nor do i classes get cancelled you suddenly make outing programs the miss food wasn't good you decide you need to go to the food plaza to eat something to the cafeteria to eat something to the local dhaba to eat something and so on and so forth and same with me they are students who would create a uh, lucas at the hostels and then there will be unnecessary meetings which were never scheduled so if you really need to exhibit through a simulation, what happens in universities, you need to model for all those things. You need to model whether a football stadium will have a congestion or not. You need to say that, okay, there'll be people moving around unnecessarily. That happens. You need to model what happens in a shopping mall, people moving around they go and buy stuff nobody goes to shopping mall and goes in a route as the mall people expect you to do and end your journey at the cash counter people forget something go back pick up items new items go ahead then suddenly remember something that no this item that i picked up i only have it keep it back, then move ahead, then find out I just forgot to buy maybe a bottle of ketchup, again go back, purchase that up, then go in almost at the cash counter, say, okay, I just forgot that I need a bigger bottle of ketchup, they are guests at home, so again you go back, that's what everybody is doing, and that's exactly what happens with robots as well, so... If you are modeling the behaviors of robots, robots in home and office environment, now none of the robot will really be utilized just to go to a goal and stay there forever. A robot will be instructed to complicated things, the complicated scenarios, and therefore there should be a way to program them up 
more intuitively and that's exactly what I will be discussing in the first part of the lecture today. So um, let's take physical beings as agents and this is what I generally do. So initially I am at home and early morning I invoke this controller that I need to go to office. Once I go to office, then after some time, I invoke the controller, go to take class. After the class gets over, I invoke the controller. So, and take class, of course. Again, I go to office. And once I go to the office, then after some time, I invoke another controller which says go to lab to see if my students are working or not. And finally, what happens is that I go to home. Now, of course, it's exactly the same as me saying that my routine is office, class, office, lab, and home. But I specifically set this thing up because there are many things that I will be now telling about it and saying why is this a very generic way to model in stuff. First, let's come to the connotations. Anything that you see in a circle is what is a controller. So a controller is something that takes a goal as input, of course also takes the current position of the robot and the map as input. So whatever is available, whatever were the inputs to potential field, whatever were the inputs to the vector field histogram velocity obstacle, it takes that as input and makes sure that the robot really reaches the goal. And that's exactly what I do. I invoke this controller. Now, once I meet this criterion, what I will write in the edges, which is office reached, then what happens is, I look at the physical robot, I look at my simulated robot, I look at my simulated agent, I dynamically change its control program. I take out the old control program and I add the new control program. So it's not a hardware change on the robot, the controller is just the software. So instead of software A, you'd say software B. Instead of function call A, you say function call B. So I dynamically offload and reload the controller based on this condition. And then of course I invoke this controller. So that's my second controller. When this happens, and there's another way to write it. So let's say my class gets over at 12 noon. So as soon as this condition happens, so I stopped taking class. You people don't allow me to speak even a minute extra. You chuck me out. So whenever this condition happens, then I go and invoke this controller. That's my same controller. So it has the same behavior. So that's my next controller. I take out this controller, which was me talking like right now. And I invoke in this controller. So when this happens, Now, and it's basically stay at office. I say it is, I go to the lab usually at say 4 p.m. Then I invoke this controller. And let's complexify it up, say, And then at, say, 6 p.m., I go to home. I invoke this controller. And finally, when, it's, when I'm at home, I say it is a stop. 
So this one was a real example and therefore messy. So let's have a miniature version of this example. So this is my synthetic world. My all synthetic worlds are 2D. And in the synthetic world, this is me. And my life goes from a goal one, a goal two, a goal three, a goal four. And I happily end my journey at goal four. So I say go to G1, my first controller at G1. I say go to G2, my next controller at G2. I say go to G3, my next controller. And of course, finally, I say go to G4, my next controller. And once I reach G4, I stop. And in order to break the sequence, let me spell out a secret. I am a security guard at this institute, so I keep on patrolling. So that's an agent that keeps on patrolling. G1, G2, G3, G4. And therefore, once I reach G4, I again do go to G1. And every security guard has an off time. So G1 is where I start my duty as a security guard. And G1 is also where I end my duty as a security guard. So whenever my time is up. So I say it is over 6 p.m. And I am at G1, then I just stop. And correspondingly, this condition will get modified that I am at G1 and it is under 6 p.m. So that sounds more interesting because what this agent is doing, it's going G1, G2, G3, G4, G1, G2, G3, G4. Remember, I'm just modeling one agent, which is me as a security guard, G1, G2, G3, G4. They'll also be my colleague who has a different behavior like this. And they will also be my research scholars who have a different behaviors. They probably go more to the canteen. And that's why I'm a security guard because one of them is a canteen. I catch them live, not doing the PhD, I catch the students live, hanging around, you know, doing what, so... Each one of them will have a different behavior, and therefore let me just show in that there are many people like this who are all under a different controller like this, under a different program like this, but this is my program, I'm a security guard. So that does something interesting. Now let's formalize what we are studying. And slowly I'll complexify the example and hopefully we'll understand this is a great way to program things up. So I've already said that every circle is a controller and every line is what is a transition condition. So first let us say this graph is a finite state machine or a FSM and a finite state machine of course is in the form of a graph I have two special vertices one is the last vertex where my simulation completely terminates it's done and this one is over here which is top and the other one is where I start my journey. So the initial condition needs to be specified. So that's my initial one. Overall, it is a finite state machine, which can be modeled as a graph, which has, of course, vertices and edges. Now, if it was a normal finite state machine, the vertices would have been state which are discrete in nature and the edges would have been 
the transitions or the transient conditions. Now here what I say that we know that this is not true because over here if I look at it from the primitives of AI that we know, let's write down what is the state at this circle. So at this circle, let me write down what is my state. So my state consists of the X coordinate value, Y coordinate value, my orientation, my velocity, linear, my velocity angular, my whatever, so many things at which room am I, which can be derived from x, y, theta, and so on and so forth. And along with that, let's say my current behavior name, if it has a name, and in a finite state machine, when you are at the state, then you remain at the state unless there is a state transition. Inside a state, nothing can change because then you've changed your state or you should be at some other state. Every state in a FSM gets one circle. The moment you change X, the moment you change Y, the moment you change anything, you are in a different circle. AI, standard artificial intelligence. Now here what's happening is that the agent, which is me over here, I went till G1, so my X changed, my Y changed, my theta changed, my linear speed changed, my angular speed changed. So the moment the change happens, I should be in a FSM modeling it as a different state. And therefore I'd say that it is not actually a BFSM, it's not actually a finite state machine. It is what we call a hybrid. finite state machine, a hybrid finite state machine is a special type of finite state machine which has two types of state variables. So let's say a hybrid finite state machine has two types of state variables. One which are mostly continuous, non-discrete, x continuous, y continuous, theta continuous, v continuous, omega continuous. So those are the continuous variables and these can change within the same FSM state variable, which means X can change, Y can change, Theta can change, V can change, Omega can change over here. Absolutely no problem because it's the first type of variables. These are optional. You may or may not have these variables. If you don't have these variables, it's just a regular FSM. The second type of variables are, of course, discrete. And these are normal variables, so these variables cannot change. Within the same FSM state variable. So here, when I say current behavior name, it's go to G1 over here, it's go to G2 over here, it's go to G3 over here, it's go to G4 over here. These do not change. So it's the name of the controller. It doesn't change when you are at the state and it's discrete. I have a finite set of controllers, which are one, two, three, four over here. I've just got four controllers over here. The names of these four controllers doesn't change within the state. They are discrete in nature. And therefore I say that these are the actual FSM state variables. 
So the only thing in a hybrid finite state machine that I've done in the normal FSM state variables, I've appended some additional state variables which does not affect the FSM working. Now, if you are from a normal TOC background theory of computation, you'll find it weird that within a FSM state, when of course nothing should have changed unless and until a transition happens, how are x, y, theta, v, omega changing? Because those are the continuous state variables. Those can change. The actual state variable is go to g1, which is not changing. And which is why I've written that over here, the name of the state right inside. Which is also what you see as an abuse of notation. Normally in a FSM, I would have written down all state variables inside. However, here I only wrote the discrete ones. I did not write down the continuous ones. So it's... And technically a hybrid finite state machine and the edges are the transition conditions which means if there is a edge from the state u to the state v conditioned on t that means at the state u if this condition is, auto is continuously checked as soon as this condition is true then the system makes a transition from here to here or in our case this controller is offloaded and this controller is unloaded. So if I do a simple simulation over here and I do not know what the other people are doing so temporarily let us get rid of them. I have my potential field it will take care of them in reality. So I start from here, I invoke a go to one and I travel all the way around over here. This is because I'm avoiding other people not visible. As soon as I reach here, then I check. At G1 is true, but it's not over 6 p.m. Mm, at the time of recording, it wasn't over 6 p.m. If you are watching this lecture after 6 p.m., my apologies, but right now it's less than 6 p.m. at my office. So it's at 6 G1 and it is under 6 p.m. So I offload this go to G1 and I have this go to G2 controller and that's what goes. The moment I come there, so it's at G2. So I offload this condition. I mean, I can continuously check for at G2 and the moment this condition is true, I invoke the at G3. So here I'm moving by my potential field method. So here what happens is I'm continuously tracking. Am I at G3? No. Am I at G3? No. Am I at G3? No. Am I at G3? Yes. So now this condition is true. So I make a transition to G4 just like a normal FSM. So now I'm at G3. So I invoke the controller, go to G4. And I'll have this all the way and finally whenever it's 6 p.m. I'll just exit which means I'll just stop. 